Hello, it's Chris. I thought I'd share my technique of how I do my interior zipper pockets now um, on my bag linings. So this is a lining fabric that I'm using for a navy leather bag that I'm making. I've seen this fabric and I just fell in love with it. <laughs> so I had to have it. So the pocket that I'm going to be making is actually a faced pocket, so it will have a facing. So this is the lining piece. This is my facing piece. And I'll explain more about that one later as we go. I've got my zipper ready to go. And I've got my two zipper pocket pieces. So for each side of the zipper pocket. I'm just about to stitch on my nameplate, like my nameplate, my label. So that's my label. I don't have a silver one with silver. The hardware I'm doing on this bag is silver. I use some double-sided tape just to position my label in place. So I thought oh, well, I'll show you how I do my little labels as I'm going. So I've got my black thread on because the backing of my label is black. I actually reduce my stitch length down to about a two when I'm sewing on my labels and I don't use my big industrial warping foot machine either because I don't like the big chunky threads and that and it's really uncalled for and unnecessary. So I tend to just use my regular threads. I'll bring you in a little closer here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm stitching right sort of close to the edge. I've tested my threads and tension and all that already so we should hopefully be good to go so yeah so stitch length of two just stitching close to the edge when i get close to my corners if i think oh it's only a half stitch away or things like that i'll actually reduce my stitch length down but in this case i managed to fluke that it sort of came close to the edge Actually, this one here, I'm just going to reduce my stitch length down to a one because it's probably only about a half stitch length that I want to go to, which looks pretty good to me. Oh, not the camera. And I'm just going to trim this top thread because I'll show you what I do, how I sort of finish that thread off at the end there. Take that little thread from underneath. I'd have to sort of trim that right up close. It doesn't get seen. So I'm back to my stitch length of two. I even like my labels to be so nice. Getting close to that corner there. I'm actually going to go back to that stitch length of one again. Love it. Back to a two. So easy. It's just a flick of the eye. And back to a one there. Uh, might go one more. Perfect. And then I'll go back to my two. I'm just going to overlap. When I get to the stitches that I previously did, overlap it by like about one stitch, and then I've reduced my stitch length back to a stitch length of one, a couple of stitches, and a couple of stitches back. And that is well and truly locked in now that thread. It's not going anywhere so I'll leave my thread tails on the back I'll just leave a little bit of length on those and I'll give you a close-up of how my label looks see if we can get it focused don't know how well that's gonna focus for us coming in that close might do might not a bit hard to see on the black but anyway it's on there beautifully now what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to change the colour of my thread because I don't want to be stitching my pocket with the black thread on the top. So I've got a thread that I'm going to change to. I've got a nice matching thread for my pocket and this is a thread that I really like. I like Goodman threads. I just think they're beautiful quality and I find they're a little bit um, stronger than the oh, what was this one called resant thread like I just think that the Gudeman's just that little bit stronger for my liking but it 
it sort of becomes personal preference what you like and also I happen to have this color already so I didn't have to go and buy that one now I'm just going to show you a little quick trip a quick trip a quick tip that I use for when I'm going to change out my thread so I'm not re-threading the whole machine again so I'm just going to angle the camera up a bit for you so you can see here I've got my thread there so that was the Guterman thread that I was using so I'll take that off I'll leave all of this in just give myself a little bit more length there just so I don't have to stand up <laughs> I'll pop my black thread back, put it all back on my spool wrap. I tend to, um, I've got drawers full of all my different threads. So on my spool rack here, I tend to um, just have whatever threads that I've been sort of recently using. Black I always leave here and white I always leave here. And I have my black there and then I just have my black bobbin. Well, I've got, actually got a couple of bobbins of black. I've got one in the machine already there. So now, get my blue thread. Put it back on the spool holder. Make sure it's all unraveling properly. And I'm just going to get these two threads. So I've got the blue thread and the black thread. Tie them into a knot. Pull that nice and snug. And at times there, I find the technique that I do here, I don't even, even always have to re-thread my needle. So I'll bring you back down to the machine. My machine's an old brother sewing machine. It's a brother DB2 B73703. It's a Japanese machine, so made in Japan. Really good old strong one. And I've had her upgraded, so she's now got a servo motor. Okay, back to the threads. So with that thread, I'm releasing the tension with my foot pedal off so the thread will glide through easy and I just pull my black thread through, black thread through. And there I've got my little knot has landed at my needle. I'll just give a little bit, pull that out a bit. Give it a little tug and that knot has just come through the eye of the needle. So, nice, quick, easy thread ch colour change. So, yeah, don't hesitate doing that technique. You don't sort of mind changing thread colours. So, I can change my bobbin thread. I'll pull that out for this one. I might change it again later when I come to sewing the zipper. So, that's my black bobbin. Then I'll just put it back on the thread spool there with the black one. Thread my blue thread into the bobbin it's all done slide that back in give it a click and then I always like to do a little test sew on a little scrap piece of fabric which I did have one here let me just see if I'm gonna see because I always have a couple here it is when I'm cutting out my fabrics the pieces that have got the little scrap cut off pieces that have got the interfacing and that there that I'm sewing. I keep a few of those because then I can use those to test my th tension and thread lengths and things like that. Like here now, every time I re-thread my machine, I always do, like you can see here where I've done a test there, I always do a little test. So I'll just put my stitch length back to a two again. check it make sure everything looks good and everything's looking really good perfect so that's just another little tip there so that was a quick and easy thread color change now what we're going to do now is we're going to actually make the facing window for the pocket i'll just get my camera angle down a bit better here for you there you can see what I'm doing so for this particular pocket they um, it says to put your facing the top of the facing piece one inch down from the top of the lining piece so this top here would be one inch down I've put to give myself a one inch guide this works really well that label 
is actually one inch down and it's centered. This pocket facing, what you do is you, in the middle, this piece here is two and three eighths of an inch high like that. And you mark in an inch, mark in an inch, and you've got a three eighth of an inch center. For me, I don't do it that way, but I still end up with the same result because I like to make sure that this box is pretty perfectly a three eighths of an inch. So when I draw mine out, I come up on one edge, the one inch, I draw, draw my line, then I move my ruler over three eighths of an inch or a half an inch. Some people like a half inch window. And then I draw my next line and then I can double check it and I've still got a one inch mark there. I just find I that's just my preferred way, but you can just do a one inch on either side and draw your line so you end up with your window there. So now I want to make sure that this facing for my pocket is going to be centered on my lining piece. My label is centered and I've actually put a notch in the top of my fabric here so it's centered on my facing piece. I've also put in a little notch there so I can I know that that's in the center. So I can just line up that facing along the top edge of my label. I know now that that facing is one inch down because my label was one inch down. So I'll have a half inch gap between the window of my zipper pocket and where my label is. Making sure that's pretty centered and that looks good to me. You can get your ruler and measure it and make sure it's absolutely spot on. You can just turn it around there and check it as well. Looks like it needs to come over a bit there. And she's good to go. So now all I need to do, I don't pin it or do anything like that. I'll come back underneath. I'll start around the centre here. I've got my little lines here. All I've got to do is follow that line of stitching all the way around this little window box for the pocket opening. Keeping this facing level as I can there with the top of that label. Starting off with a stitch length of two and needle down. I always like to put my needle down before I start and off we go. Now I'll share another little tip that I do too to help get really good corners on your pocket facing. So as I'm getting closer, I'd marked little, about a half an inch or so away from the ends here, little markers because I will be cutting into like little V's and that into those which I'll show you a look as well. So now that I've gotten closer, I'm reducing my stitch length down to about a 1 or a 1.5 and that's how close my stitches will be right up to that corner. So when I get to that corner, I turn and I just sew this whole corner at like that stitch length. One more stitch over and I should be pretty right on that line. Going there. So a little bit more on that one stitch length of one. Now I'm going back to my stitch length of two. Trim that thread off. And I just need to follow that line. Sewing as straight as you can. Come back to near that end again and I'll change my stitch length back to a one. One more stitch and turn the corner, stitch down. Looks like I'm pretty right on that line. You could go there, yeah, I think one more. I'll just manually do it so I don't stitch over. And do a few more stitches at the stitch length of one. Change back to a stitch length of two. When I get to where I started, change back to that stitch length of one and just do a few stitches. And that's all we need to do. That's our little window facing 
is sewn. So now what we need to do, I'd forgotten to mention, see how I've marked these little dots here. Some people will draw, I'll do one for you. When they do their zipper pocket facings, they'll draw like little lines going from one corner to the other. I personally don't like to do that because I can't see where the thread start like where these threads are exactly when I want to trim up to it. Just using this as a heat erasable pen and just rubbing that out because I really want to see, I'm more interested in seeing where my stitches start and end. Hopefully that lighting is good enough. Because I want to be able to snip right up to but not through those stitches and having a pen mark there it can sort of blur that and you can't sort of clearly define where that is so what I'm going to do now is I'm just making a little hole to get started so I can start cutting this little window open I want to cut a big hole and then I'll just get my scissors and start cutting up to that little dot that I'd previously made. When I get to there, I can use my scissors to trim up to that corner. Sometimes I like to use um, smaller scissors that have that I've got a nice sharp point. So these ones here, I quite like for doing this. See, I haven't got any pen marks there now, distracting me from that corner. I can see it nice and clear. You don't need to draw a little line for a tiny little cut like this. You just need to know where to start and stop. Okay, let's cut through. I can use these to cut all the way along. It's just easier using the big scissors. For my zipper pocket facing, I use a non-woven interfacing. I find that using a non-woven interfacing that I actually get a crisper finish when I turn my pocket facing through. My lining fabric is a quilting weight cotton and it's backed with a woven interfacing. That looks pretty good. So I can press up. Having the shorter stitch length, stitch length helps you get a really nice crisp finish as well with your stitching lines. I'm just sort of creasing those to help get that started. Using my fingernail just to get it nice and sharp there. Okay, what we need to do now is we've got to turn this facing through to the back. We turn that through. It's like you need 10 hands. I just get that through. Then once I've got it through, let's see here, I'll just can be a little fiddly. But I don't actually always use an iron either to press these. Depends on the fabric and that, but I find with the quilting weight cotton and the way I do the stitching, I don't really need the iron. I can just use my finger, my fingers, to get a really nice finish. No puckered corners. I'm not getting any puckered corners because of how I've stitched into those corners. So you can already see there that that corner is sitting beautifully. And I haven't even pressed it or even finger pressed the bottom there yet. Start working on that one there. And doing this technique as well I don't end up seeing hardly any of the lining the facing fabric that I've used it's just a really nice finish we always want to try and get our finishes as nice as we can okay can turn that over to the back and you'll see that there's our back and give this a little 
finger press while we're here, work into those corners, press them down. If you haven't got a fingernail or something there, you can um, use a pressing sort of tool as well. Let me just grab one here, I'll show you. Look, I'm moving the troll away too far. Hopefully I won't bang the camera on you. Like I've got one of these little, it's like a point turner and then this side here is like beveled and you can use it like as a little pressing tool. You can just roll along like that and it'll help get you a um, sharp little crease as well which can be handy if you haven't got any fingernails. starting to sit down quite nice this is where you can go over to your ironing board and actually press it down with your iron I don't even, I've got my iron turned on at the moment so so even without pressing with the iron I'll show you again there that's the back window facing looks good no major puckers or anything anywhere everything's sitting really nice and get those corners to sit down a little flat even just pressing it giving it a good squish squish it down it's just a bit of fabric and from the front looks beautiful so we've got a really nice window facing you can probably see that all ready to go I can just set that to the side for now that's ready I like that um, I don't have to use an iron I don't do anything I just stitch away now what we need to do is we're going to actually create the little zipper pocket part so we'll have a zipper coming in through here I need to make sure my zippers pull is on the right side there Zippers should, pockets and bag openings should always have a zipper to the right. So an opening, zipper to the left, opening to the right. So that should always be how it is. So if I lay my zipper this way, right there, and then opening to the right. So that means that whatever piece of this pocket panel I stitch on the top here will be the pocket lining piece that you will see sort of when you open up your bag I'm just getting my pocket pieces because I want these even though it's not a like a real precise print I just like to make sure that things are going in the same direction so this little row the little scallops they're all sort of going down on this side they're all going up so this here i'll put that as the center of my pocket so this one will be down the bottom and this one will be up the top there i still got everything going on or maybe i'll do want them going opposite directions <laughs> they're decisions you have to make Actually, I will do it that way. Hmm. Right. <laughs> so with this, um, because I want to do that there, you lay your zipper right side up and your lining panel right side up and just centre that. I've cut my zipper a little bit longer than it needs to be. I can trim it off afterwards. So I just stitch my zipper the edge of my zipper right up along the same edge of my pocket so without leaving any gaps I don't use tape or anything like that okay got those perfectly lined up just pull my zipper down a bit there always keep your zipper pull out of the way this one here I'm stitching at a quarter inch seam allowance like my presser foot's gonna go right there. I do actually like to get a bit closer. 
might um, change my presser foot because I have also have a um, a narrow toe presser foot. I don't know if you can see that there or not. We see the light there. It's just a nice little skinny little presser foot. So and it doesn't take long to change your presser foot. Just got to get my screwdriver out. Yep. <laughs> I'm armed. <laughs> armed and dangerous. Just loosen my presser foot. Again, there, it's another thing that doesn't take long to do. Just have your feet always handy. Take that one off. So that's my standard presser foot. And then that's my little narrow toe presser foot. So this enables me to be able to get closer if I like to visit the teeth, which I quite often like to do. Come on. And tighten up that screw. What I'm doing here, you can easily do on your domestic sewing machine. You don't need an industrial sewing machine because I'm only doing um got only two hands to do that. Um yeah, you don't need an industrial sewing machine to do what I'm doing. Just make sure that that's on straight. And then I'll just give that a little tighten. Maybe I'm going to put my foot over there. Yeah, I think I'll like this. This is where, too, I might, um, when it comes time for my top stitching, I like to do my bobbin thread in black because this zipper tape's black so I think I'll change that now because this bobbin thread's not visible anywhere except it will be visible when we do the zipper part which you'll see me do just make sure it's thread it the right way and And again there, I'll pull that thread up from my bobbin. Just winding the end, I'll get that up. And I'll do a quick little test sew just to make sure everything's threaded properly again. Change my stitch length back to about a two and a half. And yep, stitching's good. Better to test on a little scrap than to start sewing your project and then realise that something's not threaded properly or your thread's hooked on something. Okay, lining that up on that raw edge. And I think I will go... What I'm going to do is go a bit over a quarter of an inch. But I'm having a look to see if there's a marking. Sometimes there's a marking on your zipper tape. And I can't see one on there. So I'm following a little mark on my foot here. Using that as my guide. This stitch that I'm sewing now, you won't see this. I probably could have changed my top thread to a black as well. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Things we need to do. Just do a little locking stitch. The important thing here, I think, is just to make sure that you keep the same distance when you're sewing between here and here. You shouldn't work that close, but hey, we'll soon see. The thing I find too with sewing, if you make a little mistake, it's just a matter of just cutting out a little bit more thread and going again. So never be afraid to try things. Just trim those threads. Looking good. Give that a good press. The lining fabric is a quilting, quilting cotton. 
and I've also used a non-woven interfacing on my pocket as well okay so now I can do the other pocket piece that's going that way which way am I going I don't think it really matters on this yep that's the way I want it to go so going there line this up so now what I'm lining up is I'm getting my pocket piece panels lined up with each other so that that's fairly straight. There's a little bit of wiggle room there. Get them lined up. And then I'll do that same distance away with this row of stitching. fairly consistent lining up that edge I'm not pulling on the tape or stretching anything as I sew just the main focus is keeping the super tape lined up with that edge and keeping my stitch the same distance away gives me consistency then and it all looks uniform this little zipper pull out of the way okay. so that's done I'll give this a little press it's a fluff there turn it over to this side Press that lining fabric down. You can use an iron. I tend to not worry about an iron for this part. Just a finger press is enough. You can top stitch this section here if you wanted to. It'll look strange because it looks like your zipper's upside down. It's like you've sewn it the wrong way. But we actually want the zipper pull on this side. So if I close that up. There. Yep, that's right. Now I like to as well, just as a safety measure, and because the way I'm going to sew now, I could accidentally pull that zipper pull off. I'm just going to do a couple of little locking stitches on the ends of my zippers. Oh, zipper. I like to start in the middle of the zip, a couple of stitch forward, a couple of stitch back, and I'm done. So I know now my zipper pull can't accidentally come off the end there. Did I stitch it in far enough? Because I'm going to trim my zipper tape as well. Start in the middle of my zipper. Just a few stitches backwards and forwards. So now, on this side, I'm just going to trim that zipper tape off the excess. Get rid of that. This side, get rid of that. Pocket linings aren't 100% lined up, but it doesn't really matter. This is part of the seam allowance. So that's done. Very good. Give that another finger press, nice and crisp. Yeah. Push this little drawer in out of the way, it gets stuck sometimes. Okay, now. So I've got my zipper pull on the left, opening over towards the right. I've got my zipper facing here. I'm going to line up the edges of this zipper tape to the edges of my pocket pieces. So it doesn't have to be 100%, but you want it pretty close. Got that. Pocket panel piece up, pocket panel piece down, because I don't want to accidentally sew this pocket closed. Now what I'm going to do because I'm not going to pin or tape, glue or double sided tape or anything here either. What I want to do is I want to make sure that this zipper tape is lined up centred in between this window. So I can use this end here as a guide, lay that down. 
that actually will give me my guide as to how far to keep this folded edge away from the zipper teeth as I'm sewing. So that will help give me a really nice straight line as I'm sewing, or as straight as I can sew. <laughs> so we'll start, I like to start from the bottom, and I'll generally start at the bottom a little bit closer to the this pull. For, like, I don't know why, you can really, you could start anywhere, you could start up this end here. I don't like to start really here, because this is your focal point of your zipper. So you can start here. We could do that and start down this end. Okay, me, I'm just checking. Facing's lined up to the edge there of that, the lining and the facing. So they're butted up. So it's just getting this zipper lined up in the center of that window from this edge. That looks good. I don't have to worry about what's happening up here yet because I'm not sewing up there. So we can just leave that there. So now I'm going to, I've got my, that zipper lined in the center, getting my facing there, making sure that's sitting nice and flat, find my spot. Now I'm going to pick a spot on that zipper and a spot on my window of where I want to line up my presser foot. Okay, I'm going to keep the presser foot lining up with the edge of the foot. And I think I should be good. Well, it'll be pretty good anyway. So my top thread is coordinating with my lining fabric and my bottom thread is that black thread because it coordinates with the actual zipper. I'll start with a stitch length of one and I'll just do a couple of stitches. That'll secure that in place. And then I'll come back to a stitch length of two. You could do a two and a half stitch length. Okay. Making sure that's nice. Everything still looks good. As good as I can. Probably went a little bit too far there. That's okay. Get that straight. Put that down and stitch across. As I get closer to where this edge is, I'm going to manually just turn my needle until I get to where I would like my stitches. Probably about there. I'll turn the corner. I'm just sort of guiding this to be down. I'll just change my angle of my camera a bit there. Down there. Keeping this lined up as evenly as I can. So it's nice and straight. And I shall continue to sew. And I can just adjust this. It's free to adjust to naturally fall. I'm not forcing anything there. I'm just letting it fall. And I'm trying to keep that same amount of a gap there. The same as I'm. The best is I can. It's never always going to be 100% perfect, but it should come out perfect. You just don't want to um, come off the top of your line in there, trying to get that secured all the way down. I'm getting closer to this edge here where the zipper pull is, so I'll just pull that back. I love a beautiful zipper pocket. I just think it looks so nice inside the bag. Lining that up. Probably got a little bit closer there. Teeth up together. Yep, looks pretty good. They don't, won't be as close as what these are because these don't join right up. They, when this comes up, those teeth don't have the opportunity to close right up there. So we'll have a little bit more of that up there. stretch. 
Make the spit over. That sitting down nice. Nice and straight. When I'm not videoing, of course, you'd be doing this a bit faster. Oh, it probably went a bit fast there. No, not too bad. Coming to the end here, so I'm just going to snip this through here. stitches a bit and I'll go back to a stitch length of one. A stitch length of one, those threads aren't going to come undone. Take that out. I probably could have adjusted my tension a little bit. Could be a little bit tight on that one. Yeah, there you go. Turn that down. Close that zip up. Down there. That's my little, we've still got to close up the sides of the pocket panels here. So I can see that little bit of pucker there. I probably could have loosened the tension a bit for this fabric there. But that's my zipper leather facing. Open it up. And then that's what you'll see when you open up your pocket. Looks gorgeous. So I don't see heaps of zipper tape and it's pretty straight, it's neat, no double sided tape, no pressing with the iron and it's already, it just sits beautiful. There's my little zipper end corners on both sides there. Yeah. So I hope that those little, you might have learnt something there or something you think, oh I wouldn't mind trying that. What I will do now is I'll lay this down because I want the bottom pieces of my pocket. I'll trim these up so that they're the same length. Uh, these have got a little burr in them because I use them to cut zipper tape all the time. <laughs> I'll get my, my sharp scissors. These ones I keep just for fabric. Okay. Now I'm going to um, change this, the way this bag is sewn. I'm actually going to do a drop-in lining. So I can close up this zipper pocket now and I won't have a seam inside that pocket, which I quite like that effect as well. I don't always do that. I can. I don't have to worry about changing that bobbin thread here because you're not going to see those threads. I am going to stitch over. You can see that's that little tab piece there. When I sew, I'm going to sew up close and I'll go over that bit there and come down. And then I'll show you as well how I trim this off to get a, I feel, a little bit nicer finish as well in the bag. I usually will change over here to my bigger presser foot. I'll just keep going the way down there. Save a bit of time, please. I know you've probably got other things you want to do. <laughs> change my stitch length back. I'll do this one at a stitch length of about two and a half. I could go to about a three. I won't worry about not back stitching and locking that because I started off with a stitch length of one. Threads. They don't have to be trimmed super close there. They're not going to be seen. And then I'll do the other side. This way. I sort of monitored roughly. There's not quite an inch seam down there. Then I'll do the same on this side. Line up so it's pretty even. I want these fairly straight. I'm all the way up. Over that little tab again there. 
each day. Now I can trim this off, I, which I will do, but I want to um, show you how I trim this zipper now. Now when I come here, I don't like to trim off this facing bit here because it's going to give me a little bit of cover between the lining and that zipper that's underneath here. So I pull that facing back. This is just an optional thing you can do. Trim this down a bit. Trim that zipper off. And then you can use a cigarette lighter and just seal the edges of that zipper tape there. The zipper tape does have a tendency to fray pretty bad. So that will just make sure that that stays in place. Going over to this side, fold that facing back, trim the zipper tape down. You can just leave about a quarter of an inch or more if you like there for that. Bit of seam allowance on the pocket, trimming off those threads there. And now I will sew across the bottom of the pocket. Roughly about that. What am I on? About three minutes of it. Just in the there. Um, just put my threads. So that pocket's done. So there it is. So that's what it looks like from the back. All nice and neat there. And then when we open it up, we have got a beautiful pocket lining. And it all looks pretty on the inside too. There's nothing in there. So I hope you enjoyed that. Just my little way of doing a zipper pocket with a facing. I think it comes out pretty good. I like it. So, yeah. Hope you liked it. And I'll see you when I make the next one. I'll share, I'll keep sharing little tips as I'm going along doing things. Okay, bye.